this will be a short video about the operation of the Subaru aircraft engine that I have installed on my 2004 RV7A. First off, we have the electrical system, which is a dual bus system made by a company by the name of uh, EFII in Southern California, controlled by this switch here. Uh, basically, it's a dual bus system. It takes uh, energy from two different batteries. Um, and it will feed them to an engine critical bus um, regardless of uh, an individual failure. It will always uh, always provide power to the engine computer, fuel pumps, and uh, ignition units. So that's here in the uh, up position or both. Uh, it's fully automatic and it will uh, draw from whatever it needs. Um, in the down position, uh, it's, it bypasses the system in case there was an internal failure failure in that box. Next up over here, we have an ignition switch, which is uh, purely just power to the um, engine computer and coils on and off. Uh, that same thing, we have uh, fuel pump uh, on-off switch here, which uh, in case we had uh, some kind of a fire or something like that, we have control of the fuel pumps. And then we have a mode select switch here. Um, there are two identical electric fuel pumps. In the up or auto position, uh, it will run on the number one pump. And if it sees a drop in fuel pressure below 30 PSI, it will switch automatically to the second pump. And then we'll get an enunciator light up here that, let us know, that lets us know that that pump is uh, now active. You can also manually position the switch down uh, to the second pump. And uh, after startup, when we first turn on the power, you'll see that uh, the system senses the drop in fuel pressure and will automatically switch to the second pump and we'll have to uh, reset the system every time. Uh, it's kind of nice to know every time you get in the airplane that the system's working. So, so if we turn the main power switch on here, we'll see we get the enunciation for the uh, second uh, fuel pump is on, and that's because it saw that momentary drop in uh, fuel pressure. So we can take the switch and cycle it down to the number two, and then back up, and now we're running on the number one pump, which is uh, what we'll fly with uh, most of the time. I have a coolant level detector system installed, which is basically just a um, electrical gap in the coolant system that uh, and a little uh, circuit board that detects when that circuit is closed or open right here. So that will come on if the coolant level uh, drops below a prescribed amount, and then there's a little push to test uh, switch as well. Everything over here is just pretty standard uh, avionics and so on and so forth for the radios and the Grand Rapids EFIS system. Nothing really special there. We have the prop controller, which is uh, the uh, Quinty prop, and it's fully digital. So all you do is you just set the RPM you want, and it will uh, change the propeller accordingly to uh, obtain that. And then there's also a mode where you can uh, uh, lock the propeller in a certain pitch and make it behave like a uh, fixed-pitch propeller. And then over here I have uh, one more system installed, which is purely just a wire running from the second battery through a uh, multipole switch to the engine computer fuel pumps, and um, uh, coils. So this is a fully independent system that the engine will run on without anything else um, operating. So that's just kind of a backup system I have installed. Up here we have the SDS uh, engine programmer unit. So that's used uh, to program the engine computer, fuel curves, timing curves, startup, um, and then it's also it also can be used for uh, engine gauges, manifold pressure, temperature, things like that. Uh, over here we have a wideband air fuel ratio gauge, which is uh, most commonly found in automotive applications, race cars, things like that. But uh, it's a very useful tuning aid for tuning air fuel ratios and things like that. I also have EGTs, but uh, this is just a, an instantaneous direct readout of the ratio of air and fuel in the engine. So it's uh, it's a really easy reference to uh, to look at and know exactly where you are and whether you need to add fuel, take fuel away, that sort of thing, without having to they peak the EGT and then come back from there. You can just read... For takeoff, for instance, uh, say 11 to 1, and for cruise, say 12 to 1, or idle 14.7, things like that. So, so this will be a very typical startup of the uh, the engine. All we have to do is uh, turn the engine uh, master switch on, crack the throttle a little bit, and push the button. Starts just like a car. Then after that, I'll turn the alternator, the EFIS, and the autopilot on. And then 
I'll just uh, go to a page I like here on the uh, SDS program, which shows me manifold pressure, RPM, engine temperature, and air temperature. My airplane's equipped with the uh, Grand Rapids HX EFA system and a Garmin 480 um, EPS. Oh, let that start up here. Um, very common install here too as well with the the Grand Rapids uh, EIS 4000 and uh, an engine page that I have here that I can uh, I can use for whatever I'd like. So I've got all kinds of information on here: uh, oil temperature, pressure, temperatures, um, EGT graphs of EGTs, things like that. Very useful. And then I've also ha I also have an auxiliary input programmed. Um, for the air fuel ratio gauge to display uh, on here as well. So for uh, taxi out here and run up, there's really nothing groundbreaking. Other than the fact that there's uh, no mixture knob, obviously. Functions just like a car. Kind of the beauty of it is that it's programmed to uh, Run nice and lean at lower power settings, idle, things like that. Rich when it needs to be. And so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, spark plug fouling on the ground or leaning the mixture at higher elevations or anything like that. It's all automatic. And that takes quite a bit of uh, um, programming to get that correct. But the good news is, is once you get it correct and tell it what you, what the engine, once you tell the engine what you want it to do, um, it will do it. Uh, it'll do it the same every time, which is great. I've spent quite a bit of time on the uh, the SDS programmer here for uh, air temperature corrections, coolant temperature corrections, things like that. Air Mary traffic experimental five four two Lima Charlie's taxiing out for departure runway three zero Mary traffic. So for today's flight, got about uh, 20 gallons and uh, myself on board, about 175 pounds, so pretty light load today. We'll see what kind of performance numbers we get. So it's a little weird actually here to run up for a pilot like myself who's used to flying uh, more typical uh, engine applications, I feel like I should be checking magnetos and doing all kinds of things. Really, the only thing to look at here is your oil pressures and temperatures and uh, wait for the uh, temperature to stabilize. The package was originally built to uh, turn up to 2700, but I just don't find it really necessary to run it that hard, so I only spin it to uh, 2400. If you want, you can just uh, run the engine up a little bit. Maybe 1800 or so, just to check your fuel ratios, EGTs, things like that, make sure it's running nice and smooth. This will be a typical takeoff with the airplane. So with the proper RPM set for 2400. Check the area here. Your command traffic experimental 542 Lima Charlie's departing 30 be a northwest northwest bound departure, Murrayfield. Yeah, the only thing I like to check on the roll here is just to double, is just to make sure that the uh, air fuel ratio is nice and rich for takeoff. So between 11 and 12 is uh, just fine. So the runway heading checks. Here we go.
that's definitely no slouch on performance here. Full power on takeoff, we're airborne really rapidly and we're climbing out at uh, like about 1,800 feet a minute and 100 knots indicated airspeed. So through 1,000 feet, I'll just bring the prop back to 2,100. And I'll usually climb at 25 inches or so. You could probably run the engine harder than that, but I choose just to be uh, kind of easy on it. Reconfirming traffic, CP. Helicopter 143 to the southwest, transitioning north south, 1,500 feet. And uh, your Camaro traffic, Express 542 Lima Charlie's over the north edge of the bay. We're climbing out of 2000 and we'll be uh, northbound over the Arcade of Bottoms, running traffic. 3200 feet kind of over our practice area here. I'll go ahead and level off. Play around with some power settings. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the autopilot so we get a better, uh, get a nice smooth, uh, stabilized state here and then uh, we can really see what it does. So I'll just turn that on. We'll select uh, adding an altitude. And we'll have it fly us at uh, 3,000 feet here. So for a cruise setting that's just kind of out messing around over the practice area, I'm not really in a hurry. I'll pull it back to about 2,000 on the prop. And uh, 20 inches of manifold pressure, which is uh, very easy, uh, easy power setting on the engine. It's not struggling at all. Plus, at those lower power settings, uh, the engine's able to run a little bit leaner of an air-fuel ratio, so it's, I've got it tuned for about 12.5 right now, which ends up being about 1,300 on the ETT. So right now, we're at this power setting, we'll let things, we'll let things stabilize. We're indicating about 125 knots, which is about 130 true. And I'm burning seven and a half gallons an hour. And that's uh, seven and a half gallons an hour of uh, 91 octane from Costco. So typically at altitude, I'll run uh, 2,000 RPM for cruise, and then uh, cruise at 10,000 feet or so, and uh, very similar power setting to this, but at altitude, true air speed's more in the 135 to 140 range, and about the same fuel flow. Down low at uh, 3,000 feet here, we can uh, try a little higher power setting, see what we get. So one of the things that's neat about the engine uh, computer is that there's no harm in uh, running over square. Things that we've been told not to do with other aircraft engines is tuned for it just fine, so not an issue. So you can run full manifold pressure, pull the RPM back. So down low here I'll run, we'll say uh, 2,050 and uh, full manifold pressure, which is about 26 inches. We'll see what we get here. So with this higher power setting, the engine needs to run a little richer. So now we're running in the middle 11, just 11 and 5 or so. And uh, we're currently indicating, uh, still building a little bit here, but 144 knots indicated, 151 true, and we're burning about 12 gallons an hour. see what uh, what we can do here. So 20 
4,300 on the prop. It's going to be closer to uh, 4,500 on the engine. We'll get a couple more knots out of it. Indicating about 153, 154, which uh, true airspeed is uh, in the 160 range. And we're burning uh, 14 gallons an hour, but uh, that's probably nice and conservative. I'd rather leave it uh, leave it a little rich. One of the other things that's neat about uh, the engine is because it's liquid cooled, there's no problem with uh, shock cooling at all. So if you decide you want to go down, you just point the nose down and pull the power off. There's uh, no harm in that. You can see the engine's still running at uh, 195 right now. And it'll stay there pretty much no matter what you do. I've had this airplane over in uh, Redding, California when it was 120 degrees out. And I was able to climb out of Reading without any uh, any cooling problems whatsoever. I think if you were to allow it to uh, idle for an extended period of time in those temperatures, you might have some issues. But as soon as there's some airflow going, it's not a not a problem. Beautiful day here on the north coast. Experimental 542 Lima Charlie is in a left downwind, runway 32 Arcata. We'll do a typical uh, landing pattern here at Arcata. Now, in the downwind, I'll usually just leave the prop at 21 or so, pull the power back. Nothing real groundbreaking here, just like any other, uh, any other RV. Experimental 542 Lima Charlie's left base 32 Arcata. Throwing a notch of flaps. Get a traffic 542 Lima Charlie's turn of final 32 Arcata. And we'll just do a little touch and go here. Turn the prop back up to 24 and here we go. on the go, 3-2, the uh, southbound departure along the beach, our arcana.
Same thing at a safe altitude here. I'll just bring the prop back to 2100. A lot of people have asked me why the uh, why the Subaru engine, why be different? And uh, really, at the end of the day, um, the truth is that it's it's the way I bought the airplane. Um, but also, I do have an interesting, varied background in automotive uh, engines and engine computers and things like that. So it was something I was comfortable dealing with. Unfortunately, online, uh, you look at all the forums and things like that. Pretty, uh, pretty fickle uh, reviews of, of the engines and some people that have had good luck with them and some people that have had terrible luck with them and the ones that have had bad luck tend to be very vocal about it. Um, for me, I've, I've flown this engine for the last uh, about two years or so and actually had very little, uh, very little trouble with it. Um, I don't run it very hard. I'm not trying to go fast. Um, I really just want to fly for fun and fly cheaply, so being able to burn uh, automotive fuel is, is uh, nice for that. And uh, really, if anything, I haven't had a lick of trouble with the engine, um, but the, uh, the gearbox is about the only uh, kind of mystery as far as its long-term um, ongoing maintenance and uh, the propeller. Um, the electric constant speed propeller works fine. You can see it's working fine right now, but it has a little bit of trouble keeping up with fast, uh, fast changes. So um, turbulence, real fast power movements, things like that. Uh, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really like those. So one of the things that I'll do sometimes to help mitigate that is uh, right now I'm I'm at a constant power setting altitude. Um, the propeller has found its its ideal RPM. What you can do is just push the knob here, and basically it just locks it in place. So now I have a, a fixed pitch propeller that's been optimized for this phase of flight. So um, I'll do that sometimes. You know, in the climb, I'll let it stabilize and then uh, lock it. And then once I'm in cruise, I'll let it stabilize again and then lock it, which seems to work fine. It's just another, uh, it's another little step. But if someone were to come up with a way for the prop to be a little more uh, responsive, like a hydraulic prop, for instance, then uh, I think that would improve things greatly. But it works. And one of the great things about this engine setup, too, is uh, it's still going in an RV, which, from my experience, I think are one of the most fun little airplanes to fly. Pulling quite a few things, and... I still really like flying the RV7. I work, uh, or I fly, I fly for a living, and I still, uh, the first one to run down to the airport, pull my RV out, go burn some holes in the sky on my days off, so. You really can't go wrong with an RV. People have said that, and I, I do believe it, so. Whichever engine you use to, uh, to power yours, I think, uh, I really think really think they're just a neat little airplane.